I searched YouTube for the perfect dog grooming video to react to. I had no idea where this search was going to lead me. And there it was, the video I was looking for. Dr. Mike. Who's Dr. Mike? He's been dubbed People Magazine's sexiest doctor alive. Mikhail Varshavsky, also known as Dr. Mike, with 2.6 million yes. Instagram followers, he dishes out a healthy dose of medical advice on his YouTube channel. But does he have a dog? Yeah, he has a dog. Roxy is a star on her own. She gives a fist bump, she gives hugs. When I do events like the breast cancer walk, she'll come in, she'll post her pictures. So she's a star in her own right. Dr. Mike and Roxy are both pretty awesome. Using social media, using all of these things, I'm able to improve my influence as a doctor in a good way where I can help my patients live a better life, reduce their cancer risk, have better exercise, diets, all of these things that make a huge difference in their life. But he has another dog. You guys probably know that I have a pup husky named Roxy. I thought that it's cool to own a dog. I think it would be so much cooler to own a bear. Meet Bear Varshavsky. Newfie, a Newfoundland. He's gonna groom him himself. But will he do it right? Well, how would bears survive in the wild? That's my question. He would get so mad at so quickly. He would because that heavy, thick Newfie coat, it is high maintenance. The fact that we've domesticated dogs changed their coats a bit because of that. And Dr. Mike, we gotta talk about some of these tools, buddy. I got you. Yeah, this is your favorite part. Yeah, clean my foot. Are those kitchen shears? All right, let's take it from the top. It's time to wash the floofy newfy. Bear, get in here. Dr. Mike's got his work cut out for him. Bear's a very big Newfie, and that's a big tub, but it's not a big tub for a Newfie. I just wonder about the water supply getting through that thick coat so we can get to the skin and get the skin and coat thoroughly clean. But hey, guys, I gotta tell you, I'm pulling for Dr. Mike. I love him and I love Bear. I like to tell him like I do with my patients, all the things I'm gonna do before I do them. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the water. Then I'm gonna wet you. Once that happens, I'm gonna get the shampoo and I'm gonna lather you up from top to bottom. Do you agree? High five if you agree. Just tell Dr. Mike as a smart man, I really can, and I can tell that he's, I think he's gonna pull this off. I have faith and have confidence in him and and he's got such a good rapport with Bear. I mean, look at them, they're best buds. They trust each other. I'm thinking he's gonna do this right. With this water is sometimes it has really bad control over temperature. So I wanna make sure that it's not too hot because for dogs, hot water is no bueno. Right on. If the water is too hot, it opens the pores of the dog's skin. And because we're washing them and they already have some dirt and bacteria and stuff on their coat or we wouldn't be washing them. If we use too hot of water, it opens the pores. So the dirt that we're trying to wash off the dog could go into the pores. So he's right, we don't want the water to be too hot. Lukewarm water every time, every dog. So you gotta be careful when you get dog shampoo like I did. I got the one that's concentrated, so you're gonna need to dilute it pretty heavily. He's making a great point. Most shampoos and conditioners are dilutable. So the fact that he was forward thinking enough to say, hey, I've got a dilutable shampoo. I don't wanna use it straight up. Why? If your shampoo or conditioner is concentrated and meant to be diluted with water, a certain ratio. And if you don't dilute it, it can definitely prove to be too harsh to the skin and it could burn, irritate, cause a lot of problems. Diluting it is important and good job, Dr. Mike. Okay, this is your shampoo. All right, Nancy. We just talked about properly diluting your shampoo and on the flip side of that, if you don't dilute it properly and you add too much water, which I'm seeing that it looks like Dr. Mike did not dilute this properly. He put like maybe a quarter cup of shampoo in a bucket of water. That is way too weak. What does that mean? Bear's not gonna get clean. For him to go through all this trouble to wash this huge Newfoundland, this is a big event. You wanna make sure that you're 
efforts are not going to be for naught. You want Bear to be clean. And his dense coat definitely cries for cleansing often. At least every four weeks, Bear should be bathed and conditioned, honestly. Now, I also want to say he's using a bucket. I have what I call a bucket bath bucket bathing. I have videos on my channel where I shared that with you guys. It is a wonderful way to push the lather of your shampoo so you get a good cleanse. But I also always use a bathing loofah and I don't think Dr. Mike knows about that little trick yet. This is the version of a dog sponge. It's a bathing curry and it is great for loosening the undercoat and massaging the skin. Those are good things, but it doesn't produce lather. It doesn't push lather of your shampoo. A bathing loofah like we use to bathe ourselves with, a bathing loofah will push the lather throughout Bear's coat. Yeah. Now we wash the new, make sure we get deep into the skin folds. Look how much fur comes out of this guy. I don't want to take away from what Dr. Mike is doing. He's working so hard and he's proud of his efforts and I don't want to diminish that. But honestly, when I bathe a Newfoundland, when they're in the tub, I brush a lot of that undercoat out while the conditioner is in the coat. And I get pounds, pounds of undercoat out in the tub. Oh wait, we didn't talk about conditioner yet. Is Dr. Mike gonna condition bear? I have a special like ShamWow-esque product here. He's moved on to the drying process. That means he did not condition bear. Conditioner is key to all dog breeds, but especially to this coat type. This is a medium coat type. It's got an undercoat and a top coat. It's a medium coat type, but it's the densest of a medium coat type. And that means it thrives on hydration. It needs to stay hydrated so it doesn't mat. So the undercoat can fall out and easily be brushed out when we're doing just routine brush outs. But Dr. Mike didn't know that. And I hope that he watches this video and my Newfie video and learns because I know he wants to do the best that he can for bear. Where you can actually put your hands inside of this and just hug your dog like it's a giant little loofah. Very absorbent microfiber towels and absorbent towels that he's using is very smart. I like to use the absorber towel. It pulls even more than these towels. And when you're using the absorber towel, you simply wring it out as you're drying your dog and continue to dry your dog. It's like a sponge. It's more absorbent than a sponge. It's craziness called the absorber towel. It's linked in the description below. I'm affiliated. You can save yourself 10% off if you purchase one. But anyway, I like that he's using this and, and trying to pull as much moisture out of Bear's skin and coat as possible before he begins the drying process. I'm anxious to see what type of drying process he's going to use on this new Funland because that's a job, drying the new fee. Then I have the next ShamWow dog towel. These are super absorbent, so they do a great job at holding the water and pulling the water off the dog. You see the floor is already soaked and he just came out. I wonder if he's watched some of my videos because some of the things that he's doing is right on. It's exactly what I would be telling you guys to do. Pull as much water out of that coat as possible before we start the drying process. Tell me this doesn't look like the twin turbo back end of a, of a jet. There it is. That's a professional pet dryer. He, I mean, it, it is a professional pet dryer. The K93, which is made exactly for dogs that have a lot of undercoat. And what it does is it blows the remaining undercoat out of the coat so that you are releasing the coat of all the dead hair that's in there. This is a winner. Hopefully he knows how to use it. Why in the world do you need such a crazy dog blower? Dog skin is too sensitive, so you can't really use heat. The goal with dogs and drying them, especially big floofy dogs like Bear, is to blow the wetness off of them. Bear, you need it. You need something that will blow out that undercoat. Get it out of there. And this dryer is so very powerful. There are other dryers that would have been less expensive. This is about a $500 dryer. So kudos to Dr. Mike. He did his research. This dryer is going to last him a lifetime. But there are other dryers that will do the job. The Schoen Bowel Super Cyclone, which sells for about $180. So it has a variable adjustable speed. That would do it too for Bear. But he's set. 
he's got a good drive. When you blow really forceful air, you could actually see his skin. And that allows me as I go through to see if there's any rashes or anything else popping up in the skin. Exactly. With a thick, heavy coat like bears, it is very hard for us as pet owners to evaluate the health of their skin and coat. Do they have any new lumps and bumps? Do they have ticks? Do they have fleas? I mean, we prevent all that, I get it, but, but it's so hard to see in this dense coat. When you force dry your dog after bathing and conditioning, it allows you to see all the way to the skin on a very heavy thick coat like that. Force drying has so many benefits. A mistake that a lot of people make with these, if you go in like circles like this, you could actually create tangles in your dog's hair. So the goal is to always do it in one direction. Again, Dr. Mike, they're so smart. He's right. The dryer is so powerful. There is a certain distance that you should be away from the skin in order to avoid what's called whip knots. It's when the hair starts whipping around itself and creating its own little knots from the dryer. It's also very important to dry the coat to force the air in the direction that the coat naturally lays because you don't want to damage the hair follicle itself. Dogs have what's called a pillar muscle in each hair follicle that allows them to raise their hair when they get ticked off, you know, you've seen that. Well, that muscle can be damaged from heavy brushing, from clipping, from force drying and this is a powerful force dryer force drying in the lay of the coat the air direction should flow in the way the coat naturally falls on the dog let me show you a little demo right now of how to determine how far away from the skin you should be with a force dryer the actual length of your dog's hair is the distance your force dryer should be away from the skin so if your dog's hair is an inch long, you should be an inch away from the skin. If your dog's hair is two inches long, you should be two inches away from the skin. That's the rule of thumb. Oh, my low back. It is very painful if you don't properly have things set up for you as well as the dog. Dr. Mike is having to lean over and bend over bear to dry him for a long long time as well as wash him you know having him elevated a bit the dog it would it would be so much easier they do make grooming tables for big dogs that don't come too far off the ground that would bring bear up just enough that dr mike could work with him without killing his back seriously I've been there. I know what it feels like. There's also pet wash stations that you can go to to wash your dog and dry them. So don't forget about that. This is like a shearing blade. It's a comb. It's not a comb. It's a mat splitter. This is a grooming comb. But on the other end, it's really sharp. So when you're going through his floof, it could actually take extra hair out and tangles out. A lot of dog groomers will avoid using these because some people overuse them and start like ripping hair out of their dog. So you have to be really conscientious about how you use this. Exactly. It can definitely damage damage the skin and the coat. It can break the hair, it can rip through the hair, just mess it all up. You only use a mat splitter if you have a very matted area and you just have to break it up. And then you move on to your non-sharp tools, your comb, your brush, your de-shedding tools that are not sharp. Get a new fee, they said. It'd be fun, they said. When hair clumps together on a dog like this, oxygen and air stops being able to pass through it, the dog becomes more vulnerable to skin infections, fungal and bacteria. The coat can definitely trap bacteria and breed fungus against the skin because that heavy coat, as much as it's designed to protect your dog's skin or this particular dog's skin, it's such a heavy coat that it can actually work against the system if it's not maintained, the coat is not maintained, meaning it will definitely be able to harbor bacteria, breed fungus towards the skin, which is the largest organ in their body. So we need to protect the skin by protecting the coat. And from what I'm seeing here, Dr. Mike, you've already bathed and dried bare and you are dealing with way too much undercoat. So we need to find a way to get better tools in your hands, brushes, combs, conditioners, and different methods of removing the undercoat, brushing the conditioner through the entire coat head to toe when the dog is in the tub and then rinsing. These are methods that safely, easily remove undercoat. I'm still seeing too much undercoat that Dr. Mike is dealing with and I wish I could just jump through the screen and help him. I had a groomer for, for about a year and then they just started jacking up their prices to like $600 even though this takes only two hours. Two hours? More like three to four hours.
if it's done right. I mean, they do come to you, but then their scheduling system was a mess. And I actually enjoy doing this. I really like that Dr. Mike enjoys working with Bear and maintaining his coat. These are the type of things that I share on my channel to enable pet owners or home groomers to provide the same level of quality care to their pets as I provide to my client pets. I've been grooming for 20 years, but you just can't underestimate the power and the skill of a pet groomer, of a good pet groomer. I'm watching Dr. Mike work with Bear and I'm seeing so many things that are not adequate. He's not properly being brushed. Actually, he wasn't properly dried. Dr. Mike doesn't know these things, but the only one that stands to not benefit from it is Bear. So professional pet groomers are so valuable. I'm not on any type of high horse. It's a skill and it's a skill that a seasoned pet groomer triumphed in so many situations to learn from different things. What does work? What doesn't work? What works best with this coat type? What to not do with this coat type? You just can't replace the value of a professional pet groomer. But I do encourage people to groom their own pets. This groom here, not many people could pull it off except a professional. The only negative part about this is obviously the hair everywhere so you have to vacuum after. And then also the fact that uh, my water pressure sucks. <laughs> there are these garden sprayers that you can get to hook onto any type of plumbing. But you could change some of the plumbing in your bathroom to disperse shampoo and water at the same time. And they've been proven to really cleanse the coat very well and easily. Because you're working way too hard there, Dr. Mike. Let me link it in the description below so you can check it out. This is a wire brush. Slicker brush. It's like good for finishing his coat, but I also use it in between to sort of get some of the smaller tangles out before I go with the bigger brush. A slicker brush is all you really need to brush that Newfoundland dog. I'll link one in the description below. to say, Dr. Mike, use this slicker brush. This one, but a larger size. It's wonderful. And a slicker brush is all you really need. That You don't need several brushes for your Newfoundland dog. Just, just a slicker brush. Crazy. That is a very cheap, ineffective slicker brush. So please, Dr. Mike, check out the one I've linked for you in the description below. And then basically, I just want to clean up the fur in between his paws here, because when it overgrows, it can be a problem. So glad to see that you're trimming the pads of his feet. He is a very large dog. Large breeds tend to injure themselves if they don't have good footing. Shaving, or well, I call it cleaning out the pads. Cleaning out the pads is a, a great thing because it allows him to get better traction on our floors in our house or you know any type of uh, slippery surface, just not carpet or grass. It just allows this big giant dog to get better traction. So good job, Dr. Mike. I'm actually surprised Bear is so comfortable with letting me play with his paws because when he was a puppy, he actually cut his paw real bad and I had to take staples out of it after he got an operation. Now that would have been a great video to film, Dr. Mike. We would have loved to see you doctoring up Bear. However, I'm freshly groomed now and I'm back. I'm back in the video. Boy, I looked rough up until now, I thought. Anyway, listen, if you're getting value out of this and you want to see Go Groomer make more dog grooming react videos, smash the like button, leave a comment below and let me know what video would you like me to react to and I'll consider it. Back to it. Newfies are so easy to work with as far as their feet cleaning out the pads and I'm so glad to see that Dr. Mike realized that it's important to clean out the pads of his feet. Dr. Mike has taken advantage of the fact that he has a great dog to work with, so he's gonna do as much as he can. He's cleaning out the pads of the feet, but I'm not sure about that clipper that he's looking. I'm gonna have to zoom in on it. So let's check it out a little further. But it's important when your dog's a puppy that you handle their paws regularly for this exact reason, so that you can groom your dog. I knew I recognized that clipper. That is a piece of crap. You can buy it on Amazon. It's been rebranded like 15 times under different names because every time people purchase it and dislike it, they discontinue it and rebrand it with another name because they're selling it so cheap. I actually reviewed this clipper because I wanted my audience to not purchase it. You can watch that video. I'll link it in the card above. 
With that said, I want you guys to know that part of my mission on YouTube is to put the right tools in your hand. And we're looking at Dr. Mike and Bear right now, and I wanna show them a better clipper, be more adequate for a, a big dog like Bear. The Kenchi Flash would be my choice for anybody who just had to do some sanitary trimming on their dog, pads of feet around the bum, private areas. And those are the only areas that Dr. Mike really needs to focus on any trimming for bear. In a minute, we are gonna see Dr. Mike using that clipper, which is an adjustable blade clipper, and that's important. This clipper would be a good choice, the Kenchi Flash, because it is an adjustable blade clipper. When we clip around the anus or the penis or vulva area, Area. we're getting technical here we need to make sure we're using an adjustable blade clipper because we only want to use a 10 blade in those areas we can go closer in the pads of feet like adjust that blade to a 30 for the pads of feet and get that nice and clean but not on the private areas because it'll cause a rash irritation skin irritation it's a close clip here we have a Dremel, which is how I shorten Bear's nails. And that is a good Dremel. Good job, Dr. Mike. If you actually apply a slight pressure to the top of the nail and to the bottom of the paw pad like this, you can express the nail a little bit further, which will allow you to visualize the vein better. Yes, there is a vein inside of your dog's toenail. I'm sure most of you know that. It's called the quick. By pushing on the digit, working with each individual digit and nail, it allows you to really be more accurate with what you're doing because you can still hurt a dog with a nail grinder. One of the worst things that can happen when you're grinding your dog's nail is that nail grinder is spinning so, so fast. And we're talking about a big hairy dog or if you're working around your dog's tail that has a lot of hair on it, the nail grinder is moving so fast, it can actually catch the hair and whip it around and rip it out. Oh, yeah. So I just wanted to say that. It's just one thing to watch out for when you're using a nail grinder. Didn't say it always happens, but I want you to know that it happens. Be careful. It's time to take care of your gums and teeth to make sure that you don't get cavities. It's a good dog dad right there. Dog's teeth can very much affect their health. Hey, there's my dog. Oh, it's over there. It's over there. Brushing your dog's teeth every week, twice a week, is even better. You're going to prevent bad gums, infection, decay, things that can affect your dog's heart and actually shorten their lifespan. Yes, brush your dog's teeth. Okay, so we're gonna get some of the toothpaste on the toothbrush. Noof brush. And Bear will give you his teeth and allow you to brush them. And he'll eat the toothpaste, like I said. Yes, they will eat the toothpaste. They eat everything. Be certain that you're purchasing toothpaste for dogs because it's non-toxic. Our toothpaste is toxic to dogs. No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Just toothpaste that's made for dogs. Good job, Dr. Mike. Yeah, I'm getting those back teeth. Don't chew the toothbrush. Just wait, wait before you chew the toothbrush, please. I actually don't mind when he chews so much on the back ones because then it's like he's helping me brush them. Next, we need to clean the inside of, well, not really the inside, more like the outer inside of Bear's ear. And I have these special wipes that my vet recommended. They're called Vet's Best. They have witch hazel, aloe vera, and tea tree oil. He cleaned the ears after the bath. Smart. I always clean the ears with a safe ear cleansing solution like what he's chosen here after the bath. Why? because sometimes during the bathing process, a little bit of water can get in your dog's ear. Water has bacteria in it, so we do wanna get that out of there. The best time to clean your dog's ears is after you bathe them. The goal is not to go inside your dog's ear fully, but just to visualize the ear and get the gunk out. Bear gets a lot of gunk in his ears, again, because of his um, floopiness of his ears. Floopiness is a real word, so I like it. Yes, what he's saying is very good only as far in the ear as we can see. That's safe. I also sometimes will use a solution if there's like a lot of earwax or a lot of buildup that you actually put into his ear and then let him shake his ear out. Oh, and a lot of people don't let their dogs shake their heads when they're cleaning their ears. Definitely let them, because that could mean some water got in there 
and the way that they get it out is by shaking. After they get out of the tub, they shake, shake, shake. They're gonna bring a lot of the debris that was in their ear. And it's normal for them to have debris in their ears. They're gonna bring it to the surface. So now we can wipe everything from the surface of the ear as far as we can see. Last part of Bear's grooming routine is to get them outside of the bathroom away from all this hair. Before we move on to the next section, status check-in of the Bear Floof hair. Proud of your efforts, Dr. Mike, but I can certainly help you get a lot more of that undercoat out of Bear easily. We want to get him out of the bathroom because it's really wet in there and hairy, so we want to do the finishing touches in here. He's already coming to join us. I know that bathroom's destroyed. I would love it if Dr. Mike would have shown us what it looked like after he force dried Bear in there, but he's not done force drying Bear, and he's going to finish force drying Bear and brushing him out and trimming him in the kitchen. Dr. Mike, why destroy? <laughs> two areas of your house. Just contain it to the bathroom. Just one place to clean up. All right, Noof, we're gonna finish your coat now. Blow you out, and then I'm gonna do a little haircut for you because you're getting a little bit too poofy. High five if that's okay. Play dead. Could we ask for a better bear? We love you, bear. That's the gl most glamorous part of owning a dog, shaving his beep, but he gets a lot of rashes here because of the moisture gets trapped. True, we don't want to leave our heavy coated dog at all still damp. We need to thoroughly dry him. I want to make sure Dr. Mike knows that he should only be using a 10 blade setting on his adjustable blade clipper around the penis area of bear. The beep area, it definitely could cause irritation. It could become a bad skin infection. 10 blade only around those tender areas. couple things I want to say about this scene because I want to help Dr. Mike and Bear because he's not a groomer he doesn't know he'll learn he's a smart man if we use our comb to comb through all that fluffy hair on Bear's leg and then we don't go for the kitchen shear we go for a real shear Dr. Mike I have my own set of shears I'd love to send them to you let me know if you want them there's a big difference between kitchen shears and dog grooming shears dog hair is different than even human hair kitchen shears are meant to cut things like plastic bags and boxes and chicken wrappers it's not noofy floofy hair what it does is it it bends and pushes the hair away as it cuts it's not meant to like a sore that's what grooming shears do. Good grooming shears. And my grooming shears are very affordable. That's why I teamed up with Kenchi to make them because they're the best. We need to get Dr. Mike a set of my Kenchi grooming shears. And be careful, they are sharp. They're very accurate and precise. They have a micro serrated edge. So they grab the coat. So it's a very precise in our cutting. They don't push the hair away. It cuts the hair. Isn't this incredible, Dad? <laughs> Well, how would bears survive in the wild? That's my question. He would get so matted so quickly. This is an area that I really, really wish I could help Dr. Mike. Bear shouldn't have this much coat to deal with at this point. All that undercoat could have been removed safely and easily in the tub when the conditioner was on. But Dr. Mike didn't know to condition bear, but he does now because I'm here to help him and bear. Yes, we condition every dog. Our dogs will not mat as quickly either. The undercoat will not stick in their coat as if it does if we don't condition them. It allows slip in the coat if we condition the dog. It seals the hair cuticle so that it is not ready to wind itself back around other hairs in the coat. I know that's getting a little too much, but I'm looking at Dr. Mike. He's working so hard. He could have avoided a lot of this sitting on the floor and dealing with all this coat and still saying, I wish Bear's coat was more relieved of the dead coat at this point in the grooming session because I know he's thinking that. That could have been avoided. I would love to help you, Dr. Mike. You gotta give me a call. You know what? I'm in the tri-state area too. I'm right in Pennsylvania, man. I can shoot right up I-78 and be in New York City in three hours with traffic. That would be a fun video. I think this is already more fur than we had in the bathroom. It is more fur than we had in the bathroom because the job wasn't actually finished and completed in the bathroom. As well as the conditioning state, we could have gotten all that out of Bear and we wouldn't have to be dealing with it right now. At this point, Bear and Dr. Mike are tired and I'm sure he's thinking, gosh, this is just craziness but he's sticking it out. We could have gotten a lot more of that done in the bathroom in the first stages of this grooming session, but he didn't know, now he does. Yeah, this is your favorite part, I know, I know. 
Better slicker brush would have gotten us a lot farther right now. That slicker brush is just kind of like backpedaling. I don't like that for Dr. Mike and Bear because I really like them. I'm going to link the brushes, combs, and safety shedding tools that I would really love to put in the hands of Dr. Mike and Bear and anybody else who is dealing with a large double coated dog. I can help you. I'm gonna link them in the description below. They'll get you there a lot faster. He's looking back at me as I do it. Yeah, clean my foot. Gotta keep the back area hygienic. Absolutely. We do need to trim back there a little bit, but not with kitchen shears. You've got to have some of my sapphire shears, but I love your efforts. Look at the shine on this coat. This is a healthy mammal right here. How do you feel? You smell nice? Mm. That is the whole point of me making this video. Dr. Mike knows that brushing, bathing, getting the dead hair out of bear, trimming the sanitary areas, all these things are health needs for bear and it does improve their health tremendously if they are groomed regularly and that's why I wanted to make this video for Dr. Mike and bear. He is happy and it's amazing how much they want to please us and do what we want. Even though we know we're doing what's best for them. He's very compliant. Bear, you're just wonderful. The floof is clean. He's dry for the most part. He's happy. Look at how much fur leaves this animal. But he really does need to be completely dry. It's important to not leave that skin damp, but that undercoat damp against the skin. It's very important. Such a big job grooming a new fee. I get it. I'm just impressed that Dr. Mike did as good of a job as he did. And honestly, if I sat here brushing him for another hour, probably I could double this. De-shedding in the tub with conditioner and a better slicker brush, you definitely could have more than doubled that hair. I'm gonna hook you up, Dr. Mike. It's pretty easy to groom a dog that behaves well. So it's important to handle your dog early, get them used to you being the owner and playing with them and cleaning their ears and their teeth and their paws, because then it becomes a rewarding experience for the both of you. It's almost like you've been watching my videos. It definitely increases the bond that you share with your pet when you meet their grooming needs and they know it. That's why Bear's a happy pup, right? <coughs> yeah, good boy. Now you need to watch my new fee video. Go watch my new fee video. Dog grooming react videos. Who I will react to next. I'll see you in the next one. Never break, always fight, never quit. We're right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that stack.